Hello YouTube and welcome to another Parkitect modding tutorial. Today instead of uh, focusing just on one kind of modding, I just wanted to more quickly go through uh, a couple different modding options starting with putting in custom trees. And this is really similar to my custom flower tutorial, but yeah, I think it's helpful to just see things done on different props and uh, the different ways you can approach it. So we'll start with the trees, maybe do some rocks or statues, uh, look at vehicles again, and I'll just try to talk about some of the different like paradigms and things to keep in mind when you're working in Blender and in Unity. And let's just zoom in on our custom tree. Pretty interesting, you can see there's a lot of detail in these leaves, um, but performance is good. We've got lots of trees placed down, and if we go look at the model in Blender, you can see it looks very different, and it's because they've used a trick of textures, custom textures, with transparencies. So the tree is just made up of a bunch of rectangles, but when you put those textures on it, which, uh, let's look at those now, look like this, then it adds all that detail without any of the performance hit if you were trying to model each pine needle. So starting from scratch, uh, you just go to Sketchfab, search trees, and I opened a few different ones. So this one was an example where it looks nice, but it has 100,000 triangles, which is just gonna be a pain to optimize. So you really want your model to be around 5,000, maybe 10,000, uh, but trees, you know, the player's gonna place a lot of them, so 5,000 is better. So this is gonna be a lot of work to optimize. Let's find something else. Uh, these are nice. They look kind of like the in-game ones, and you could just use, you know, flat custom colors, uh, just like we did in our first tutorial. But let's take a look at these. So this is the one I just showed you, and it has custom textures. So 26,000, now that's for every tree. So we've got nine trees, so they're pretty low individually. And I also wanted to point out, we wanna be allowed to use these in a, our mod. And so this says CC, Creative Commons Attribution. So that means we can use them, we can modify them, but we just need to give credit. So you know, throw a link and shout out to this guy's name, Ponolix. Uh, in your Steam upload, just give the guy credit and you're good to go. So download, uh, when I try to choose downloads, you know, I'll start with the original format, that's what the person created it in, so I'll probably have the least issues, so start with FBX. But you know, maybe if you have issues with that, then just move on to the next one, you know, trial and error. So I already have this downloaded and imported, I just did import FBX, and it came in like this. Uh, and let me just show that because there is one uh, thing to think about. So we've got our source, trees. So they actually came in uh, as a bunch of individual trees. And so you could just delete one of them and then I scaled them down. So I'll undo that import. And in here, you always want to again go to object. So we can see I scaled it down, but the scale hasn't been zeroed out. So it's going to look gigantic in Unity if we import it just like this. And then when the user tries to resize it, its size will like snap back to one and it'll look huge and it'll glitch out. So that's uh, just control A and you want to apply scale. And we can also do rotation. Now I usually don't apply location because we actually wanna be a little conscious of where the location is. So this orange dot down here is the origin. You can see it there. And that's gonna be where the player's mouse is like clicking. So the tree, they're gonna to wanna to place it on the ground. So it's nice that it's at the bottom. Maybe if it was like a giant prompt, you'd want it in the middle, or maybe if you had um, do something like weirder, like a big angled uh, thing, like some of the animals, they have like a T-Rex, so you want his feet like anchored back here. So it'd be nice to place it at his feet, which might not be the center. So just think about where you place that. If you want to move it, uh, you can do Shift-S and move the cursor 
which is the 3D cursor somewhere. And then, so I did shift S world origin, and you can right click and say set origin. So you can do like geometry to origin, and I'll put the center of the geometry there. Now you could also hit edit, and then you can move this around, but the origin won't move because we're in edit mode. So if we move it, move it here, then the origin moves, the location moves. Right now it's zero, zero, but the tree is moved. So you can adjust that. And the origins, uh, you know, important with animations, especially. Okay, so next, you know, want to check the texture. So you can see over here, it came in with these two materials applied. And uh, if we tab into edit mode, then you can actually, I'll hit uh, Alt-A to deselect, and then you could select just the tree. So this is in another language, but that's selected the trunk. You can see the texture over here. Then you can hit this, select just the leaves. So we'll leave that as is. Uh, this can actually be nice if you want to make your own selection groups. You know, I could just select just that face, hit plus, and then I could assign my selection. Uh, and you can only modify these uh, when you're in object mode, not edit mode. And you can also do that, you can make vertex groups. So that's better if you're just doing selections, edits. This you can actually assign different materials to each selection. So we've got um, some materials. So these came in with their own. I've already uh, made some, but we can fix this one as well. So you go down to uh, base color, so you've got your material, base color, texture, image texture. Okay, so you're telling it's an image. Now you need to find your image. So we can browse for it in the folder. And we'll go to downloads, trees, textures, and then they're all here. Okay, and it's as easy as that. So see, now it's applied. And we can do the same thing here, but I already did that. You can apply that. Uh, it's not gonna show the transparencies here, so that's why there's black, but you can see the leaves are showing up. So as easy as that, then we'll just do file export FBX, and you want to, as always, apply your transform so it comes into Unity correctly, and we want it to show up in our Unity folder, so one easy way to find that folder is show in Explorer, and then just select that, copy that in here. Okay, and then we'll say tree version two. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so we got a new tree, drag that in. And you can see it's over here, so we've looked at this before, this is the hierarchy it's where all your objects in the scene are. So you need it in the scene. Uh, this is just like the assets here in your working folder. So Unity only really cares about if it's in your scene. That's where it's actually gonna show up in the game. And then to actually get it loaded into the mod, you just drag it over here and then it, it moves it. So they're just nicely spaced out, easy to see. And you can always hit F when you have your object selected over here to zoom in. Okay, so we've got tree version two, deco, that's fine. Uh, yeah, this is all fine. You can see me go over this in detail in my original tutorial. So we wanna add our custom texture. So we'll go to materials. And just like in that flower tutorial, we're just gonna say create new material right here. We'll say, that, uh, let's just call this pine tree. All right. And then inspector, so that shows us what this uh, resource is. And shader, we want to use the Perkitech shader. Diffuse cutout, remember that's the transparency one. Okay, now we need to drag in our, uh, our textures. So I've got some loaded in here, but let's go get our original one. We can start from scratch. So we'll go to trees, textures. Okay, so we want to get trunks and leaves, drag those in. Okay, so that's our trunk. Uh, we'll also create a new material for the trunk. And the trunk's a little easier. 
as I'm not going to make it recolorable, so we can start with that. So you have your trunk selected, you just drag your texture there, and then apply that to the, the trunk right there. That looks all right. It might actually be, there you go, Cora. That was the one I wanted. So you always want to go back and see which name was used. Um, so that's all good to go. And then up here, we want to make a few changes. So I have my pine tree right here. So we can put this new texture there. All right, and that's already looking a lot better. So that was just our new material, put the texture up here. And that's good to go if you don't want it recolorable. You can just uh, upload this. But if we want it recolorable, which is always fun, we want to make a few changes. So let's get our file here and we're going to open that with GIMP or any photo editor of your choosing. And we have to think about is recoloring means you're tinting it. So if it's if you leave this green, then whatever you tint it, it'll just be like a darker shade of green. So even if you try to make it pink, it's just gonna look like muddy red. It's like mixing paints. So what we want to do is just go up here and uh, desaturate it and just make it black and white. And we'll let that process. Uh, you'll notice there's brown. You know, maybe you would want to like select the brown. This is such a small scale. We could just recolor this, and if someone wants to make the tree blue, it can all be blue. But you know, you could go in depending on the texture and try to leave certain colors, or make them a different type of recolorable. You know, a different color slot. So just something to think about. So I'll overwrite the file. So now this is white. So that's good. That means it's ready to be recolored. And if we look at our pine tree, we have the mask. So that's what tells it where we can recolor. So if we go back here to our flowers, we wanted the flowers to be recolorable. They're white and the red said where you can recolor it. So same idea here. We'll uh, go show and explore and we'll take our material and make a copy and we can call this mask. And then we're also gonna open that in our image editor. And then we just need to use the red and the blue if we had anything else to add those different custom color slots. Okay, and what we're gonna do here, so you could start a few different ways. You could select the uh, alpha and then you could just fill this in with red. Now I tried this and the issue I had is you're not gonna get this perfect, like see there's a little opacity here. So you're gonna have this edge that's not actually recolored on your tree and it'll show up as this sort of halo effect. that's like white or black and it'll look really weird. So depending on your texture, maybe you're gonna just wanna grow that selection, fill it in. Uh, for this, since we just want the leaves to be fully recolorable and unlike the flowers were these we had flowers and leaves on one texture you know this the trunks a different texture so the leaves can just be fully recoverable so just paint the whole thing red keep it easy okay and then remember we have four channels so i'll show you here we have red recolorable and then things we don't want recolorable we're on a zero out so these we had also but if you look at a different example, I already made this red, and then green's black, blue's black, alpha's black. And so remember, the way to make alpha black is you need to add a layer mask, and then you need it to be black. So see, if I say show layer mask, it's black. And since it's black, it means nothing's visible. So we have the red there, we could always look at it. Uh, but that's what you need to have all four channels, uh, you know, in control and as you want them. So we've done that. We can export this and then we go back to our leaves or pine tree and you just drag that there. 
and you're good to go. So now this is gonna be recolorable. You can just add your color slot, start off with a nice green, and that's all there is to it for your recolorable trees. Nice work. Okay, another thing we can look at is these mushrooms. Uh, a Discord user is importing these and they're kind of an interesting one. They've got a few tricks up their sleeves. So first, the download. It's a blend file. This is a little wonky to work with. Uh, what I like doing is if we go to Blender. So import, you'll notice blend is not an option here because it's unlike these just being like models, the blend file has all these things connected with it, just like this mod template. Like it's how the windows look, it's what uh, windows are open, what's included, what textures, like there's a lot going into that. So what you can do, what I did down here is you can open the blend file. So this is just from the download. And then uh, you, you can look at this and you can be like, what do I want to take out of this? So we can grab one of these mushrooms, file, export, FPX, and we can just take the models. I already did that. And then we can go back here and let's hide that. But let's turn on our tree. This will be a good reference. So we've got our tree and we're going to import FPX. We'll import that. Okay, there's our mushrooms. I'll move it and I'll zero everything out. Okay, so that was easy enough. Now we've got our model in our mod template where things look like we'd expect. So that's how to work with a blend file. But what's interesting about these mushrooms in contrast to the tree is you know, it comes in with a, a material and let's look at our tree. It's got two materials. So I mentioned this earlier, but the these are just ways to assign groups. And when it just has this one group, that means only one texture is applied. So we can just leave that there, but then under base color, image texture, open, we can go find that texture. Okay, there you go. Okay, and that's that texture that's over here. And so the way we switch is, here's your normal texture, but then you can just find this new texture. Uh, or we could open one of the tree ones. Uh, so let's go to the tree actually. So if we tab in, now you can see how this is overlaid on the texture. And it's a little confusing actually, because we've got the trunk and we've got the leaves. Um, so I can like grab, they go here, select all these leaves and we can just move them. Or actually, let's just shrink them. There you go. Okay, so the leaves, you can see they were like huge. They were overlaying this entire thing. But if we go to the, uh, the branch, which is the PN, uh, you can see how that overlays. And I think we actually found out the Koro. See, that's the one that aligns correctly. So you can see how they textured that. So that's how their UV map works. And this is its own set of tutorials. You could look on YouTube for UV mapping. But if you're just modifying it, understanding these settings are enough. Uh, let's undo that. Okay, so now uh, we've got, again, you see, it sh looks like they're both applying to the same texture, but they've actually been split up into these two groups. So back to the mushroom. And we just need to find the name of our mushroom texture. There it is. So the mushroom has just this one texture. There's only one group over here. Now you could always make a separate group. Um, but when you import it, this just has this one and you can see the way they chose to do this is they put it all in one texture. So you could have your trunk, you know, over here and your leaves on this side, or you could split them up like the tree. So here they've got the uh, texture. Let's just deselect so we can show ourselves. So that's the, the stem and then here is the underside. So it's got those, those lines. And then up here is the top of the cap. So if you were going to make this recolorable, you know, you could just treat each thing differently in your image editor and 
the main difference of how you work with it, if we go back here, it's just like the flower. So this is like the mushroom. They put the leaves and the flower in the one texture. So if you're gonna have recolorable leaves versus uh, flowers, you know, it's all gonna show up here. But you can also just do it separate, like the leaf and the trunk. And the biggest difference is also how you work at it in Unity. So you know, when I drag like this custom texture material onto an object like this, you know, it just applies and the flat ride, see it has all these sub objects. So that makes sense that you could drag it on to each one separately, right? Cause they're each a different uh, like sub object in the hierarchy. Uh, but this tree, you know, it's letting me drag these on separately as well. And the reason for that is because of the way it's been exported uh, with these two groups. So that's a nice trick. Like if you have glass on your object, you, you want to apply one of these transparency textures, but you want to apply it just to one part of it. Or you know, maybe we modeled these seats, but we want the baseboard to be the shiny metal. You could split them all up into a sub object. So if I go back to here and our spinner, right, we could just split them up into all these different shapes, uh, just like this coaster train has it. And so you have the shiny metal wheels and you could apply the matte finish to the seats, but you could also split them up here where in your editor you create new ones of these and then you would select what you want and you'd assign it and then we can say deselect, and we can say select the trunk. So those are just two different approaches depending on how you want to do the textures and how the modeler really chose to do the textures. But either way works. And all that's going to change is, you know, with this trunk, since it's a separate texture, for every texture we need a material. So we've got this material, we've got this material, but for the flowers, yeah, you know, we just got the one material. So that's the only difference. Uh, and just something to keep in mind as you import different models from Blender. Oh, we've got these Easter Island heads that are kind of fun, low poly. Let's import those. I already downloaded those. Let's just find them. Here we go. All right. Oh yes, and I remember I ran into this. So it said FBX files are not supported. So then I just went to the next option and just tried that. So we'll try that again. We'll look for these and there you go. Cool. And uh, just while we're on the topic of importing, let me import something else. I believe it was an STL. So this was something someone found on Thingiverse and you can see you import it and nothing's here. So you can actually right click set geometry to origin and boom, there it shows up right where you want it in the middle of your screen and then you can scale it down. So when you import, you know, there's a few different things you might want to need to debug or sometimes they're so big you can't actually see them. So imagine if this came in huge it'd be like you're inside it and it'll just kind of be invisible sometimes. So don't panic, maybe just you know hit S, try to scale it or move it to the origin and you should be able to get it to work. All right, so we've got our cool uh, models here. So you can see it also imported with this kind of structure. So these little axes mean it's an empty and then the mesh is actually down here. So we can actually drag that out of all this hierarchy. We can delete these, but you can see they flipped over and that's because those empties had rotations inside them, but that's fine. It's good to clear those out before you import it into Unity or it'll just cause you a headache later on. So let's jump in here. We like where our origin is, but we want to move everything. So it's level with the ground, which is zero. Okay, let's check our object. 
Oh yes, the square. Okay, we've got a slight rotation. Our scale is good. Let's just apply rotation and scale. Okay, now I like this middle guy. You know, we want players to place them down separately. So let's work on him first. So select him, hit control L, and we run into our first issue. You know, it's not selecting these other ones, which seems funny. So sometimes you can move it and that kind of gives you your first sign or nothing else is coming with it. So if it was all connected, I drag this. You know, I'd expect everything to sort of deform. So what we're running into here is that the vertices aren't connected. There's double vertices. So what you can do is just hit A, select all, and you're selecting all vertices up here. And then you want to hit merge, merge by distance. You can usually leave this pretty low and you can see it just removed 2,600 vertices. So it basically merged this all into one piece. And the reason it wasn't in one piece is just how they exported it. And that's pretty common. So even when you export things from uh, Asset Studio, for example, they won't come in one piece just because of the way Unity was processing them. So keep an eye out for that. So now we can select the whole guy, all selected, hit P, separate by selection, hit tab to go to object mode. Okay, so now, now we can just work on this guy. So now he's his own object and we can export him. Next thing, let's uh, work on how he looks. He's a little chunky looking. So we'll clear splits. And then we're gonna have auto smooth. Let's just put auto smooth on and we can control the angle. So that already looks pretty good. You can see as we increase it, like maybe we wanna have his chest show a little rounder or not. You like the low poly look. That's kind of nice. This level rounds out his face a bit. Makes it look a little more polished. Let's leave it there. And we can also hit a Hit shade smooth. So those, uh, that also kind of rounded out his shoulder. Let me just undo that. There you go. So we selected all the faces, shade smooth. So these are just kind of the initial import processing you want to do. And then we can actually dial this back now that we have our shade smooth on. Leave that chest definition there. Um, and let's say like we wanted it more rounded, but we just really want to emphasize this part of the geometry. You can select the edges, right click, mark sharp, and now it will uh, fade those out. It'll fade out the other things. So we could do that up here too. Uh, mark sharp. That looks pretty cool. So those are just a few tricks uh, when you're working with imported models to get them to look how you want. Uh, you know, it came in with its own material. We can just change that to our diffuse. And then we can just select all of these. I always like having this sync selection on. And we can just throw those on our custom colors. And there you go. So he's looking good and ready to export. And just like anything else, select your object, export, FBX, selected objects only, apply transform, and you're good to go. All right, let's do something just in here. We can make our own rock. So we'll do a icosphere. We'll make this a little larger. Let's turn on our uh, scene for a sense of scale. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, and I'm actually going to move this sphere. There we go. All right, so yeah, this sphere needs to be a lot smaller. So this is going to be a rock. So we'll start off like that. And I'm actually going to delete that and add a smaller sphere just right here because uh, we could make this have a lot more subdivisions. So it's really smooth. All right, look at that. So nice and smooth. We've got a sphere and now we want to make it a rock. So the first thing we can do is jump in here and we can scale it. And that looks good. Go for sort of an oblong rock. Um, maybe we'll make it sort of twisted. So I'm going to hit this to make it transparent. 
and I'm gonna go to face mode. So then these points are the faces. So if I go like this, you know, just selecting one side, nothing on the back, that's from earlier. But if you click this, it's transparent and we can like select through it. It's like both sides. So I'll do all a clear my selection. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna hit W to cycle through these. So we could do like a kind of a lasso. We could do a box, circle. So let's do a box and we'll just sort of select all that. And then we could just sort of start stretching it and rotating it with R and stretching it, rotate, scale it. Sure, that looks interesting. Okay, and now I'll hit A and we'll do knife and we'll just start chopping this thing. So like that, turn off the transparency. So we're gonna clear outer and we're gonna fill it. Okay, and then we're gonna select A again, and we're gonna clear out our fillet, and we can look at it from this direction, and clear inner fill, and maybe we'll chop it from this direction, fill, and from this direction, There, fill. All right, you sort of get the idea, but that's like one way you could start chiseling your own rock, which is interesting. I'll do one more. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, also play around with modifiers. Like we talked about before, you can mirror things. You can array things, so if we collapse the mirror, here's our array. So we could like have a bunch of these if we want some sort of pattern. Let's just do five. Uh, we could also add a decimate modifier, which will simplify our mesh. So you can see it sort of gives it that low poly look anyway. Uh, let's get rid of our mirror, there you go. So that's a pretty nice rock right there. So yeah, just another thing you could do, some of the blender tools. Okay, and now that we've spent some time in Blender, let's uh, look again at Asset Studio. So if you remember, this was that tool that lets you go and pull files mm. from the in-game assets from Parkitect. And if you watch the custom coaster train tutorial, you'll learn more about that. But once you got this open, I just wanna show you a few more things. So last time we had our asset list right here, all our meshes. And yeah, here's another good example of you know how trees look in the game when they're not textured. So I like sorting by mesh. You can also search by texture if you need those, but let's look at just mesh. And we'll go back to the spinning coaster I was looking at earlier. So that pulls up a few different assets related to that coaster. So we like the car. Now this is just the, the bogies, the wheels, just the base of it. So one trick you can do here is say go to scene hierarchy. That'll jump you over here. And this is a whole mess. There's a really long list you can see. But it drops us here and then you can select everything. So this is going to get us the seats, you know, everything that makes up this object. So there's got this whole hierarchy. So then you could say export selected assets. That's just going to export this one model over here. If we do model export selected objects merge. You can see I already did that. I'll just export it again. Merge version two. Okay, so this is really powerful. Let's hide our rocks. X import FBX mesh version two. Okay, uh, now here's another thing you'll run into is for some reason it exports at a really small scale. So you can see over here, where is our model? We just need to hit one, zero these out. Okay, there's our model. So easy as that. Uh, let me leave some of these on so we got a sense of scale. And we can just move our guy over here. 
cool. So this is a great way to see you know, how the, the pros, the developers, they're modeling their things in the game. So they've got this car, it's got the wheels, the tops of the, or the bottoms of the top wheel are at the zero point, just like the wiki says. So that'll make them right along the top of the, uh, the track. Uh, we've got an empty at the top, which lets us sort of have this structure. So we've got the base, which is the, uh, the spinning coaster base. And then we've got the spinner. Uh, this is sort of interesting. You actually need to have an empty, according to the wiki, called spin access. So we would want to change this for it to recognize, you know, what to rotate around. Uh, but just something to keep in mind. So you do have this hierarchy though. So everything under this is going to, uh, you'll be parented. So it's the children of this. This is the parent. So everything under here will follow. So, you know, if you rotate just this top thing, the seats rotate and that's what we want in game. So you would call this spin access and unity and then it would know that's what it should spin around. They also put the back axis in here as an empty and you can always add empties right here. And I'll just go back to that. So the empties, these are just different ways you could visualize it, like axes and arrow, but they're all the same. Unity is gonna see them as the same. So you, know, you can add that back axis in Unity if we jump over here. And you know, let's just make this rock a coaster train. So you know, add the rock, call it a train, it says there's no back access. So you know, you could right click, create empty here, back axis, and you can put that somewhere. So front, back, but you know, it's, it can be nice in your modeling software to just already have that set up. And in the similar uh, vein, you know, they've got the seat empties. So in Unity, it says there's no seats. We can add a seat, ride the rock, just like the pioneers used to. So the seat, it just shows up as an empty and it's rendering a guess just to help you visualize it, but it's an empty. And so, you know, just like this uh, mod template says, delete the reference guest mesh on export, but you can add your seats as empty. So if you just want to do that in your modeling software, you know, add all your seats. And then it's got our restraints here as well. Let's just take a look at how they modeled that. So the restraints, we have a pivot. So see that orange pivot point. So we're in object mode. So if we hit R, it's rotating around the pivot. So you could test this and you could, you know, you want to model your restraints in the open position and they'll close the angle you specify in Unity uh, as it leaves the station. So back here, you know, you add restraint. The restraint name is the, the name of your restraint object over here. And then the close angle, how much it closes. So let's say we've modeled our restraints um, and let's grab this one. And then we can hit R in here and we can do a test. So you can see that's 21 and a half degrees. So we could say, yeah, that looks good. And then when we go to Unity, we know 21 and a half. We just type that in the box and we're good to go. And it says angle around X axis. So this is the X axis. It's gonna rotate around it. So that's the red is the X axis. You can do some shenanigans if we want to look at local transformations of these. And then you could actually see how this object, right? It has sort of zeroed out rotations, at least in the X axis, but you could spin this object and then see now it's X axis, this red thing from the top. I'll actually go into the, the move to help us visualize this. So the red is the x-axis. So now it's pointing up, which is the global z-axis in Unity. So we can go back to global, see they flip, local. So you can actually take advantage of this. So if the local x-axis of just this mesh is here, then the Unity restraint, it'll rotate around this. So then I did this in some of my trains, it's like a door. So you can have a door open on the side. So that's a way to like manipulate the axes. 
One thing to note is that it's not true with the spin axis. I tried it. Spin axis always looks at the global of the model, so it spins around Z and swing is around uh, Y this way. Just something to keep in mind. So, uh, other things to look at, they've got this whole thing as a solid, just because it's a pretty short car, so the front and rear wheels don't really need to steer into the track. It's not gonna be like articulating a lot. But we could also, you know, change that if you wanna make your own car. So let me go and grayscale so you can see what's going on. So here's another example where it's not selecting everything. So this is just our same issue. Uh, select all the vertices, merge by distance. Okay, bam. So now it's selecting like we expect. It did, you see, sort of mess with the shading because now it's shading across edges because they are connected. So, you know, maybe you need to tweak your auto smooth, so you just clear split data, there you go. Shade it, okay, back to normal. So, you know, you could select these, you could select all these, this, right, and then we could hit P if we selected the other side, P, and we can name these, you know, wheels front, and just follow the wiki, so there's like wheels front, wheels back, and then it'll pivot around those, and uh let's see so that showed up down here which is fine but you could also you can hold shift and you can set this as a parent so we could like nest this just to help us organize so we've got our our top bogey we've got the wheels and then we've got the spinner so that was just shift to parent and then you can also uh move it outside the collection and hold shift. So if you drop it out here, then it clears the parent. So we definitely at least want it under our empty so it all comes in together. So with that in mind, uh, let's see, let's look at a few other things first, is just viewing things. So you could like mess with extras to turn off those lines. Uh, a few other tips is N opens this toolbar over here, if that ever disappears, and T opens this toolbar. And then we've got the wireframe view, the transparency view, the color view, uh, which we can look at right here. See, it's got its textures already applied. And like I mentioned in another video, we can turn on back face culling. Uh, let's take a look. So we actually saw a little movement down here. So, all right, uh, we've got back face calling off, on, off, on. So what's going on here? So that's a little cylinder. And what's happening is it's a little hard to see. Let's actually take it, let's add our own object. So let's add a cylinder and just look at this a little more. All right, let's delete the top of our cylinder, gone. Okay, so now it's an open cylinder, it's a cup. You know, maybe you're making a glass cup, it's gonna be transparent. Um, so that looks fine, still looks fine. But if we turn on back face cooling, which is how it's gonna render in Unity, it's invisible. And it's because these planes have uh, normals and they're only going to uh, render in the one direction where the normal is pointing. So you can actually turn on face orientation, it sort of shows that. I think if we turn off culling, so blues out, reds in. Uh, let's turn culling back on. So you got a few options. We could select this, we could say recalculate normals, we could flip them. So for some reason, we just want to render the inside. You could do that. Let's uh, undo that. Or you could also extrude. So this is just sort of doubling the uh, object. So now there's two sets of faces. You know, another approach, you know, you could just extrude on one side, extrude the other way. 
you could also select all your faces, shift D to duplicate, and then you can just like scale them a hair, and then you could recalculate normals and flip them. Okay, so that's back face calling is on, but now you can see what's going on. So yeah, just a few more tricks and tips there. Okay, and before we export it, I also just wanted to draw attention again to this origin of the spinner. So that's in the center at the spin axis, but we've got our wheels front origin up here. So let's grab everything, export it, file, export, and export, okay. All right, so that doesn't look right. We got uh, a missing C area. So let's go through our whole hierarchy. So it says it's there, there it is, but it's a little, little small. So we can see in our inspector, it's really small and also it's rotated. So, I mean, you could just like fix it in here, but that's sort of weird. And then if you ever make any updates, it's gonna be a whole mess. So let me just clean up our hierarchy. Okay, so this can happen for all sorts of reasons. And let's uh, get rid of our giant cylinder, there you go. So, you know, we could grab everything, we hit, can take control A, rotation and scale. But I already tried this and I looked through all of these and they're all one, but it still is importing strange. And you know, that's just sort of what you run into, especially when you're like pulling things out of Unity and then putting them back in. You're just gonna run into some of these glitches. So there's a few different options. Like let's say you just want the wheels because you're making your own train. Just come into edit mode, hit A hit P and just like steal them into their own independent object. And that should kind of clear out any of the wonkiness. Um, you know, you could also try like shift D and move it like, um, but jumping and getting, pulling out the polygons I've found uh, can really help because then you sort of remove them from any weirdness that was in the object data. Um, for this one, so we had our spinner really small, so that's everything here. So uh, let's uh, make this a little easier to tell what's going on. Let's add a new collection. That'll be up here, we'll call it spinner. And then let's put our thing in there. Oh, and that's another example is you need to grab everything. Okay. And we don't care about this guy. We'll delete him, delete all these. Okay. So let's take our spinner, let's move him, let's clear the parent, but we'll keep the transforms with all. So shift all. Okay, you see that sort of like exploded everything. So we need to remember these are all under spinner. Okay, now that's back to normal. And now we're just gonna put these back under the spinning coaster car. And then I'm actually just gonna ignore this empty since it's not really adding anything. We already have a good hierarchy. We don't need to like double it up. So just grab these lower ones. Export FBX version two. All right. And it looks like that still showed up small. Let's look at a few different things in here. So we can also try to just remove them all from this. And we'll just apply rotation and scale again. We'll put our spinner back under there. Put these under our spinner. Back axis under here. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay. And I've just been renaming these. You can try to overwrite, but sometimes Unity doesn't refresh like you'd expect. Uh, and you can also right click and hit refresh, but it, I don't know, it can just be a little risky. So if you, you wanna you know, eliminate as many variables as possible. Like when you're making a change, when you're debugging, uh, like I just did there to get this, you really wanna just like make sure you're only doing one change at a time because uh, you'll go crazy 
you're wondering why things aren't working like you expected them to. Okay, so it looks like that finally worked, and you know, it didn't seem like it made that big of a difference, but just trying to clearing the hierarchy and redoing it, that fixed it. And so I really recommend when you're importing anything into Blender is do a test export into Unity before you make any modifications, just to make sure it's not importing all crazy. Um, because sometimes like maybe the model is really broken, you just can't figure it out, or you need to clear everything. It's a lot easier to do that at the beginning than at the end. So, you know, make sure to keep that in mind. Just take things one step at a time. Maybe you just want to throw your train model in, you know, make it a deco and just make sure it works. And then, you know, debug one step at a time from there. Okay, so we can drag it over here, make it a train. So hit F. Okay, so let's see. So we've got our seats. Uh, and it looks like the seat scale also is messed up. So we could adjust all those. You can shift select, we could set them all to one, and then we can set this to zero. Um, and this is just another example. I won't debug all this, but it, it can just be really messy when you're exporting from Asset Studio. So try to just grab what you need and not do everything all at once. You know, grab it one piece at a time. So you can see these are the seats there. They all have their uh, position cleared. So we could just set them in the position we want ourselves in Unity. Yeah, uh, let's see, so Y axis is up. So that means you want to spin them 180. There you go. Um, you know, maybe it's like, these guys are just causing trouble. Let's let's delete them. And you can say, oh, it, it won't let us. And that's because this is a prefab, so it's blue. So that means any changes you make to the prefab down here, uh, they will propagate. But if you uh, you know need to make changes here, it's kind of risky because then you'll have to like, redo things. But you could unpack the prefab and you could like delete everything. Um, but we'll keep seat four. We'll delete these other ones. There you go. And you could even duplicate seat four and then you can go here and the X axis is that way. So it's negative, so you can make it positive and then you'll go over there and you can flip them over the Y. So oh, just some different approaches. Uh, you can also see because we exported it with the back axis already set, and you can see the back axis is set at the rear pivot, the rear wheel, so we got front, up here, back. Then that already imported, it recognized that, so that's nice. Uh, we can also, just some Unity tips is these options, so it was at center, so that's like the center of the geometry. It's nice to have it at pivot, because then you actually know where the game thinks the origin is. So you put that at pivot, then you're like, okay, this is in the right spot. It's gonna pivot around the front wheels. Uh, and then these are the axes, the local global. So like I was saying before with the restraints, uh, I think our restraints also imported. Strange, you know, we could fix the scale on those. So here's our restraints. There we go. And those have a pivot where we expect, and then the axes, uh, we could put them local, they match up with global, but you know, if they didn't, that would help us understand which way they're gonna rotate. And restraints, we can add those. So it found our uh, restraint, let's call it restraint one, and we'll say, I think it was like 22. There you go. So that's previewing what the restraints will look like. Uh, and just a few other comments as we wrap up on custom cars. So you, you choose your ride, spinning coaster, your train links. I think this is pretty intuitive. When you dropped your object up here. So these are each like, each object is something over here and these are independent props. So they don't interact with each other. So if you're making a car then everything about the custom car is in one object. So you initiate the object with your lead car. So you drag this over here, 
propagates into your lead car. So this is a spinning. And like I mentioned before, the wiki says to call this spin axis, I believe. So you do that. You can adjust your spin settings, some other properties which are defined in the wiki. It knows where our seats are, our restraint, and then normal car. So you know, if, if our normal car looks the same, we can just drop that there. Let me see if that shows up. Um, it might not like that because it's a duplicate. So let's uh, make a copy and it can be easier to copy and paste in the Explorer. So let's copy and paste. Okay. So we can make this our normal car and then we go back and select our main one. So now it shows up behind. So then we could start changing things like we could offset the front like that like that okay so that's like good spacing and it makes sense to have this as a different car because you're going to want this to have like a bar extending to bridge the gap between the two so the normal car is going to be slightly different and uh, again just some other settings you know front is about the collision box so we can set that there so that this doesn't run into something in the station. So if you set it here, it'll just clip through the next car in front of it, or the next train in front of it in the station. So this is the collision box with the pivots or how it actually moves and interacts with the track. So those are really important. So, you know, define the pivots and then in Unity, set these. These offsets, uh, not, if I change it up here, this will actually push back this car so that's gonna control how the normal car pivots relative to the front car. So it kind of makes sense to have it pivot around the rear wheels like it would in real life, and then have that bar extend to the rear wheels from the normal car model, and then it'll pivot there. Um, so like often I'll leave these zero, and then uh, you, know, you just adjust these things. Um, and yeah, that's about all there is to it for cars. So hopefully this helps you make some cool new mods. Uh, if you ever need help, feel free to join the Discord. There's lots of helpful people there that can give you a hand. And as always, happy modding. See you next time.